Welcome to the latest episode of Breakroom Chats. I'm your host, Glenn Simon, Product Marketing Manager for vSphere. In this series, we bring VMware experts to talk about VMware vSphere and related technologies. In today's episode, we're going to talk a little about the latest release of vSphere 8 Update 2. Um, our expert today is Katerina Brookfield, Staff Technical Marketing Architect for vSphere. Katerina focuses on how vSphere can be used as an IaaS platform and host cloud native apps. Uh, welcome, Katerina. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for having me. Okay. So when it comes to running cloud native apps on vSphere, uh, what are the big problems we're trying to solve with this particular release? So one of the areas we're really focusing on is making it easier to set up your Kubernetes environment and platform to allow our customers to get to that Kubernetes Delta quicker. And the other enhancements we are looking at is really ex expanding the capabilities of the platform to make it easier to provision workloads, whether those are containers or virtual machines, to truly unlock that modern consumption of vSphere. Okay, so uh, now let's switch gears then and talk a little more about those enhancements. So at a high level, what is the latest release of vSphere 8, uh, update 2, to do to help uh, those folks who are maybe more focused on the, the so software development side of things like the DevOps engineers, maybe platform operators, uh, maybe some other IaaS consumers? Um, what are we doing to kind of help their jobs get done? Okay, so as I mentioned, the first step is the enablement process, and we are really making enhancements to make that simpler. So one of the new improvements we have added in update two is the possibility to export and import supervisor configuration in a form of a simple JSON file. So you can now take the JSON file to reapply the configuration steps to deploy new supervisor clusters with either the same settings or maybe just change the cluster specific setup. And you can either export this JSON file when you do the initial deployment, or you can also export this from a running supervisor cluster. And another option that we have added is the possibility to clone supervisor configuration to another supervisor cluster running in the same vCenter server. So this is all making the enablement process quicker and simpler. Okay, so yeah, because I guess we've heard from customers that that uh, just kind of setting up these supervisor clusters, it takes a lot of steps. So now I guess it's it's almost kind of like a cut and paste sort of thing, right? Yes, very much so. It's very okay. simple. All right, cool. Um, what else? So the next one, when we are talking about DevOps users, let's focus on some of the enhancements we have done with VM service. So in update one, we have already introduced a lot of enhancements such as providing you know, DevOps users with the option to open uh, support consoles for their VMs, and also to deploy and customize their Linux-based virtual machines. What we are introducing in update two is expanding of this functionality by introducing Windows virtual machines as well. So now customers can use their kubectl commands to deploy and customize their Windows-based virtual machines. And the customization data is using the standard sysprep that is added to the VM configuration file in the form of a secret when the customers are deploying it. Okay, so with VM service, if I'm a, a consumer, a DevOps or some other uh, person sort of outside the vSphere admin realm, um, and I just want to provision a VM. Now, we, I know we introduced VM service a while ago. Um, I don't know, what is it? Maybe a year, year and a half now. Uh, but it was limited. So now I guess, are there any, you know, now I can do Windows VM, now I can do I guess a lot of other, um, I'm, I'm not as limited now as I used to be, right? Is that- Yes, kinda... so it's Linux-based, Windows-based, and also the configuration options have opened up. So right, you right. can just deploy your, as you would deploy your traditional VMs, now you can utilize the modernized ways of deploying virtual machines and do it using Kubernetes YAML manifest. Awesome, okay. And uh, anything else? Yeah, so about? just staying with this self-service setup. Um, we are introducing something we are calling a VM registry. So in the previous um, uh, releases of vSphere, the DevOps users could deploy virtual machines from a content library, but they weren't able to publish any new templates into this content library. The only person who was able to do that was the vSphere administrator. 
So what we are introducing now to really unlock that self-service portion um, of the setup is the possibility for the vSphere administrator to create a writable content library and allow certain DevOps users to publish new VM templates into this content library. So therefore they will be able to access and publish images within their namespace to the content library, and that will become their VM service, uh, sorry, VM registry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, it sounds like what we've done is we've made it easier for DevOps folks to ignore their vSphere admin. <laughs> well, not ignore, the vSphere administrators <laughs> are very useful to set you know, the environments, the guardrails and, and course, all the yeah. policies. But we are really focusing on DevOps users and the self-service so they can do what they need to do quicker and simpler without having to ask Windows. Right. Ministries. Obviously, I'm joking. Obviously, I'm joking. <laughs> but but to enable greater self-service so the, yes. those folks can get their jobs done without having to kind of do the whole ticketing or back and forth or emails or any of that stuff. So yes. that I would great. say the consumption is the strongest focus that we are seeing right now. Really yeah. the self-service unlocks that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else um, we wanted to highlight or I guess? No, I'm just uh, very okay. excited. Those are the top. The yeah, food. those are the top three. Okay, great. Um, well, uh, before we wrap, are there any, you know, if, if anybody watching uh, wants to learn a little more about these things, these enhancements, where, you know, any suggestions on where they can go? Uh, yes, please. Uh, you could visit uh, core.vmware.com and go to the Sri Tanzu landing page, uh, which will show you everything you want to know about the Sri Tanzu. Um, in forms of blogs and videos. And you can also follow us on YouTube. If you prefer video content, we always publish on the VMware vSphere there as well. Okay, yeah, and we'll definitely include links to those, both the Tech Zone and our YouTube channel in the description for this video. All right, uh, and with that, we've come to the end of this episode. Thanks, Katerina, for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. My pleasure. Uh, and all of you, if you've liked this episode, then please join us next time for another episode of Breakroom Chats. This is your host, Glenn Simon, signing off for now. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.